there are some very interesting applications of the metropolitan ethernet network we are going to look at one such situation as we know that mobile communication actually depends on the network infrastructure including the base stations base station controller the mobile switching center as in i am just giving you the example of 2g networks in the case of 3g these devices are known as uh, uh, for instance uh, node b e node b home e node b as in 4g now these devices are essentially required to have very high connectivity at a very high data rate with very high availability with each other so there's an interesting application of the metropolitan ethernet network to provide the backhaul service backhaul service means that not the air interface but the wired interface in the telecom sector is now being migrated to the metropolitan ethernet network technology so the essential background of it is as we already know that mobile networks have actually all gone to ip networks now this is more of the evolution in terms of the access we have already seen that starting from 2.5g gprs edge hspa to 3g um, and then in 4g as well however the transmission between the network elements such as the base stations uh, and the core such as on the access side we have a uh, base station bts bsc uh, node b as in 3g radio access network and on the core side the core side actually can have the radio network controller uh, or a gateway node uh, as in the 4g networks now if you really want to provide very high connectivity uh, at a very high data rate with high availability we have to think about providing this service through metro ethernet um the metro ethernet connectivity uh, actually needs to take different forms and needs to provide uh, a lot of flexibility because uh, all these technologies starting from 2.5 uh, g to 4g and 5g even uh, depends on a variety of factors for instance what is the capacity which is required uh, to provide this backhaul um, what are the mobile standards like the ones some of these that we have just uh, recapped and uh, which compatible transportation technologies uh, uh, are already there and how would they best fit with the ethernet technology now this is an interesting uh, uh, figure this shows us how the uh, mobile network radio access uh, uh, through base station and the network controller is implemented through uh the existing technology that is the tdm time division multiplex uh technology um such as uh, sdh synchronous digital hierarchy sonnet uh, synchronous optical networks uh that's the current situation but uh, in terms of the uh, metro ethernet then we actually have to uh, think about establishing uh, the uh, vlan kind of connection that is ethernet virtual connection and then uh, there are some uh, connectivity interfaces or demarcation points that we know as the user to network or the network to network interfaces so here we have uh, actually um, the uni uh, of the customer side unic on the left hand side in figure a radio access network customer equipment with tdm so tdm is basically the one that uh, involves uh, um legacy network so uh, once we want to introduce the metropolitan ethernet network backhauling then we have to look at it from the uni perspective so we have the uni end on the customer side we have the uni end on the network side uh, we have the generalization of the metropolitan ethernet network once we have the connectivity using men hardware in the figure below well, what is different from above is that here we have uh, the tdm legacy network um, that we already know but here in the lower case we have the extension of the uh, metropolitan ethernet network connectivity scope not only between the uni of the customer side we we actually have 
uh, now deployed the uh, customer equipment and we have enabled it with uh, MEN, the Metropolitan Ethernet Network um, technology, uh, right from the um, access site, that is the uh, base station, uh, and we have directly established a link with the uh, core network uh, uh, using the more, uh, metropolitan Ethernet network technology. So, uh, in in simplest terms, if you want to understand it, uh, we can say that the uh, uh, scope of uh, metropolitan Ethernet network is actually dependent upon uh, the existence of the uh, technology which exists beforehand. For example, in the figure above, we have the uh, scope which is between the uh, UNI and the NNI within the service provider. So the service provider is purely responsible for providing translation between the uh, interfaces and it has got nothing to do with the um, with the end networks that is with the uh, radio access network whereas in the figure below now the radio access network itself is involved in translating uh, the uh, the traffic uh, as per the mo uh, the metro ethernet uh, uh, network uh, at its own so it needs an interface directly at its own so uh, the scope is essentially now brought down to the radio access side so the metro ethernet network is actually used uh, by the operator uh, to provide backhaul to a net, uh, mobile service provider uh, and it is done through UNI and the scoping of UNI can be the responsibility of the service provider as such in the core side or it can be done at the access side provided the radio access network equipment uh, the RAN CE is connected to mobile backhaul via the uh, interface at its own. Now the radio access network customer equipment is a very broad term uh, because depending upon the technology it can actually mean the radio network controller that is used in uh, uh, 3G and 4G networks, the gateway used in 4G networks, uh, it could actually be the uh, location of multiple controllers or the gateways uh, uh, no, not only one and then it could be as simple as a base station node B or any other specific access uh, radio access device which is placed on the uh, air interface side. If there is a TDM interface as we have just seen in the diagram uh, that if the radio access network customer equipment has a TDM interface then it means some kind of uh, um, service emulation uh, is performed to make it integratable or interfaceable with um, a metro ethernet network. So it means that uh, there are certain uh, techniques such as the um, uh, circuit emulation service or the PDH circuit which are uh, traditional TDM technologies. So if you really want to provide um, uh, Metro Ethernet service to the, uh, to the end network or to the access network, it is very important that uh, you don't have to change the interface for the end user. That is exactly what we saw in the figure above. However, if the Metro Ethernet service exists with the uh, end network that is uh, uh, at the access side um, so the backhauling becomes uh, an all MEN affair so if the customer equipment of the mobile operator already has the Ethernet interfaces uh, so it will support all the functionality that we have seen Metro Ethernet network can provide including the E-Line, E-Lane and E-Tree so, so this is the recap uh, once again, we have the figure above that is uh, regarding the TDM emulation that is required for the, for the access network. But in the figure below, the access network already has the Metro Ethernet uh, network infrastructure. So there's no such requirement for uh, TDM emulation.